Did you know that you can use Gradle to create zip files and even unzip them? So they call them archives and unarchive, and you can do it right inside your Gradle build file. I'd like to show you an example, and I'm going to do it in both the Groovy DSL and the Kotlin DSL to cover all the bases. Welcome to Tales from the Jar Side. Here I have a section of the user manual. I'll put a link in the description that's called Creating Archives. This is part of the overall working with files section in the user manual. They have an interesting perspective. They say from the perspective of Gradle, packing files into an archive is effectively a copy in which the destination's an archive instead of a directory on the file system. So that this looks a lot like copying, except it's got some slightly different steps. They say the simplest case looks like this. Now, in this, they're showing a Groovy example in the Groovy DSL at the moment, and then I'll show you the Kotlin one. In the collection of tasks in the project, you can register a new one called package distribution of type zip. See, that's what's interesting about creating an archive. There is a built-in task in Gradle of type zip. So here they specify the archive name and the destination directory, and the from here is a method saying where the files are that they want to include in the zip. You know, where are we copying them from? And then putting them in a zip. Now they do point out, this is a little unusual, specifying the archive file name and the destination directory, because most projects apply what they call the base plugin. Now the Java project, the Java plugin, includes the base plugin. So yeah, most people are using the base plugin. So what does that do? Well, over here you can see under archive naming, they say the main convention provided by the base plugin defaults to creating archives in the distributions folder underneath the build directory. And the name of the archive itself is project name, the name of the project, dash version number, which is set on the project, dot type, where type is either zip for zip files or tar for tar archives. We're going to stick with zip files. If you wind up creating tar archives and then untarring them, please send me an email. I'd love to know what the use case was. All right, now that we know where the file is going to be, let's look at a more realistic example. Now, I have a project here that I've created, and I'll put a link to the GitHub repository in the description, which is a Java project. It has two modules in it, a Groovy DSL module and a Kotlin DSL module, because I want to show you build files that use each. This one is the Groovy DSL module. I've got a Java plugin in the plugins block. And here's my task of type zip. Let's look at this zip task. So the task is of type zip, as they say here, it's an abstract archive task, or rather zip extends abstract archive task, assembles a zip archive. The default is to compress the contents of the zip. I've written it in this style. We'll talk about that in a minute. Notice that the from method here, the from method takes the object dot dot dot, the variable argument list of source paths. Specify the source files or directories for a copy. They're still referring to copy because it's part of abstract copy task, even though we're creating a zip archive. So we're copying from the source main Java folder and from source main resources folder. Now the slightly misleading part is this into method into doesn't mean a directory we're copying into. Instead, as it says here, creates and configures a child copy spec with a destination directory inside the archive. So this is making a dist folder inside the zip that's going to hold the readme file, assuming we have one, and I do. So there's our zip task. Now what this is complaining about is that I have written this in what they call the eager style in Gradle. That means this is happening, the calls to from and into are happening at configuration time. They wouldn't actually create the archive unless I asked for the task. That happens at execution time. But the rest of this configuration stuff is happening eagerly rather than lazily. So what IntelliJ is telling me to do is switch to task.register, which looks like this. Now it's lazy because if you look at the documentation for register, it says defines a new task which will be created and configured when it is required. 
So if we don't ask for it, we don't get it. So fine, I'll make it happy, that's fine. Now looking at the Kotlin DSL version of this, looks pretty much identical. So the, again, I have task.register. The little difference is this, zip is included as a quote, reified type in Kotlin. Kotlin has a way to keep type information around rather than erasing it, which happens during compilation in both Groovy and Java. If you look at the documentation for register, it says, yes, this is a reified T, which implements the task interface and returns a task provider. So this is the zip task in Kotlin. And the only rest, the only other difference here is that we need parentheses for the from methods and the into method and double quotes for the strings, but basically the same thing. Now, before I run this, let's take a look at unzipping at the unpack mechanism. So back here in the documentation, we have a section called unpacking archives. That says archives are effectively self-contained file systems. So here we go again, unpacking them is a case of copying the files from that file system, the zip, into the local file system or another archive. The key is to wrap our source in something called a zip tree. You see, if you just do a copy with the zip, it's going to copy the zip. <laughs> we don't want to do that. We want to expand it. So wrapping it in a zip tree will expand the archive. And this example right here is, is labeled unpacked files. It's of type copy. See, there is no type unzip. There's only zip. With copy, we say from a zip tree wrapped around the location of the zip file into the layouts build directory in a subdirectory called resources. All right, let's see what that looks like in our code. So since I'm on the Kotlin one already, let me go to that. We register unzip as a copy task. I decided to make it depend on the zip. See, there's no point in unzipping if there isn't a zip file. And we could have made that optional by using something like only if, but what the heck, let's just make it create the zip and then we'll unzip it. Here's the fun part from, and this, there's the zip tree. This monster here is how we get the location of the generated zip file without hard coding it in. So let's talk about this for a minute. Tasks is the collection of tasks in the project. This is of type task container. Named means find a task of that name. And the name here is zip of type zip. So there's only one, it's the one we just created. Now that returns something called a task provider. So I have to call get in order to extract the actual task out of the task provider. That gives me the, the option to get the archive file from our, from our task. The archive file is returned here, but that too is a provider wrapped around a regular file. So once again, I have to call get to get back the regular file, and then as file, we'll convert it to a java.io.file, and now we got what we need. Then we copy it into the build directory again in a directory called expanded this time. Okay, fine. Let's look at the groovy one. The groovy one, again, is way simpler. Switching to task.register again, now we have the unzip type passing in the copy class, so it knows what it is. Depends on the zip, but isn't this better? Zip tree wrapped around task.zip.archive file. Done. Pointed directly to the archive file and we're set. And the into again goes into the expanded directory. So let me run them. So for the groovy one, let me execute unzip which will run the zip task and then the unzip. And for the Kotlin one, I'll do the same. I'll run unzip and that runs the zip task and then the unzip. Over here under the Groovy module under build, first of all, under distributions, you see the zip file. See, there's the project name and the version number was 1.0 and it's a zip file. And in the expanded folder, in package structure, you see the source file, main.java. It's just a copy, it's not compiling it. In the dist subdirectory under expanded, you see the readme. So that's how we created that. And the distribution underneath the Kotlin module is exactly the same. We have, again, the Kotlin DSL module 1.0.zip. We have the main function 
or the class rather, and read me in the dist, and we're good. So the results are the same in either case. One last thing to show you, and I'll start with the Kotlin module again, is that the Java plugin includes a jar task, and you unpack jar files the same way you unpack zip files. So I want to run the jar task, and here I'm going to make a class called, or task rather, called unzip jar of type copy. Once again, I have a from zip tree. This one's a little simpler. I could say task.jar to retrieve the jar provider or the task provider of type jar. So again, I have to call get to extract it from the provider and then get it the archive file. And this time I'll expand it into the folder called expanded jar. Let me resynchronize again. And then for the groovy DSL, once again, let me switch over to task.register. There's unzip jar of type copy, depends on jar. And again, it's just jar.archive file to get to it directly and expand it into expanded jar. And if I want to see them run, let me execute unzip jar in both the groovy DSL and the Kotlin DSL. And the only difference now is if you look inside expanded jar, you get the compiled class, because that's what's included in a jar. And under meta inf, you get a manifest, because that's what happens when you create a jar. And once again, they're identical under both the Kotlin and the Groovy DSLs. So that's how you create jars and how you expand them. Now, if you look further in the documentation, you see that you could do interesting things like include only certain files or exclude others or rename them as you create them or un unarchive them. There's a lot of extra things you could do. Feel free to take a look at the documentation for more details. I know my bias here is I'm really fond of the Groovy DSL as opposed to the Kotlin DSL. But I do have to admit I have lost that battle, especially now that Kotlin, or rather Gradle, has decided to settle on the Kotlin DSL by default, starting from the current version of Gradle moving on. So we'll see. If you're interested in this, if you find these sorts of videos interesting, I have an entire playlist of Gradle videos. There's not a lot of them in there, but there's going to be more. <laughs> They're coming. And hopefully you can subscribe to Tales from the Jar side and you will find this very interesting. In the meantime, I will say thank you very much for your attention and take care.